there's an interesting, as you know, we're, as we're bringing science to bear on, on this issue to the extent that it can be brought in at all, there what we're talking about in a certain sense is the upper right quadrant and the upper left. This, we're describing what happens in the interior of your own consciousness as these progressive unfoldings occur in meditation. We increasingly have um, EEG and brainwave evidence for what's going on. Now, you have to be very, very careful about that because there is a tendency, it's a very strange tendency, we see this being reported in, in news organizations all the time now, where there's a new search for the new you know, G-spot, which is the, the spot in the brain that lights up when people have God experiences. <laughs> it's harder to find than the other G-spot, as far as I can tell. But one of the things that they're doing is just, if somebody meditates and they say, oh, this spot lights up. And the clear implication is, therefore, God is just a physiological fireworks here in the brain. It doesn't really exist out there. It's just some brain thing is melting down or fusing or something's going on over here. And that's why people think they see God. Mm -hmm. Now, they don't say the same thing about, okay, I see an apple and this part lights up. Right. Therefore, the apple is, a, is not real. Right, right. But for some reason, they think that, that, that all of a sudden any sort of uh, spiritual reality is not real, but it is causing this to light up. Mm -hmm. If we don't make that mistake, nonetheless, the whole point about a four-quadrant analysis is that any of the events we're describing has a correlate in these other dimensions because right. these are first, second, and third person ways of looking right. at the same occasion. Right. And we have very sophisticated 16-channel EEG evidence, for example, on 20-year meditators that shows that when we're saying the divine presence becomes sort of ever more continuous, this really translates on the eye side to this divine big mind, this ever-present noticing or witnessing becomes ever more constant through waking dream and deep sleep. We now have EEG uh, um, evidence of numerous 20 to 25 year meditators showing that there is a subtle awareness that extends through waking, dream, and deep sleep. And yeah. subjectively, that's what they report. Uh, that um, I'm, I'm just uh, kind of amused at the lack of consistency of these materialist scientists. They pick and choose, they, don't they? They pick and choose, <laughs> and they don't, they, they, they don't have the awareness to realize that the mind, the mind-brain uh, interaction cannot be answered on a physiological level, but must be answered on a more basic level of physics, I would say quantum physics. Because what these brain cells are, I mean, it's more of a gel gelatinous kind of energetic system, the yeah. brain. Yeah. But then when you analyze the, the structure of the brain, it comes down to atoms, electrons, photons, so forth and so on. And when you get to that level, you're not really talking about material reality. This is a reductionist notion that they're trying to, to introduce that, oh, the brain is just kind of a, uh, the, the mind is, uh, the consciousness is kind of a secretion of the brain and uh, uh, God is like an event in that secretion, yeah. which, which, as the British would say, that's rubbish. Yeah. Because if you're really going to understand this, you've got to look at it on the quantum level. And on the quantum level, materialism doesn't have a foot to stand on just to, uh, you know, to stretch the metaphor. You know, that there is no material. Yeah. And, and to think that, that Guth uh, at, at MIT yeah. Uh, you know, the one of the wonder kits of, of astrophysics, and his latest theory is trying to say the whole universe is a result of, of, a, of, a, of a quantum fluctuation of an electron, which is the closest thing to saying it's come from nothing. Yeah. Or it's come from spirit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, that, that, when, you, when you push down that far, mm -hmm. it's Alice in Wonderland anyway. Right. And the, the, the latest, and this is why I'm always very suspicious of, of you know, trying to equate the findings of modern physics with, with any sort of mystical opening. Right. Um, not that you can't find parallels. No. But, uh, you, you know, Plato called physics, the whole of physics, mm -hmm. a likely story. Right. And in certain, <laughs> in certain yeah. ways, it, it sounds a put down, but it's not. I mean, he recognized the importance of physics, but if you actually keep following physics, that used to be the quantum mechanics is, you know, where it was happening. Right. That's 80 years old. Yeah, now you have string theory. It's string theory, and here's yeah. what's happening with string theory. You get down to string theory, they now have to postulate 11 dimensions uh, in order for this to happen. It's no longer, quantum mechanics is only one of four mm -hmm. forces that are mm -hmm. united in string theory. It's right. actually called M theory now. Right. And, and according to M theory, these strings can stretch 
substitute through infinite membranes. So it's also called membrane theory. Mm -hmm. And these membranes are stacked up roughly. The universe, according to this theory, looks roughly like a loaf of bread. A likely story. But it looks like a loaf yes. of bread called the bulk. Right. And I love that. And, and each universe is a slice. So if you slice the bulk, you get this sliced bread. And then we're one slice. Right. So gravity is the only force that moves through all of this. Mm -hmm. The other three forces are bound to each slice. Mm -hmm. Every now and then the slices bump into each other and it, it initiates a big bang in one of the slices. So we do have parallel universes. Right. There are now at least 11 dimensions accounting for this. Now, even though there is a great deal of agreement that this will explain and is the only theory that can explain a unification of the four known physical forces, mm -hmm. it's also agreed by every single one of these folks that there is no way in hell we can test this empirically. No. So all of a sudden, physics, which yeah. is supposed to be the empirical discipline par excellence, mm -hmm. is now a Pythagorean mathematical game. Exactly. You, exactly. Which is okay with me, if yeah. that's what you want to... Because the, these... <laughs> right, exactly. Because the, <laughs> these strings cannot be empirically experienced. They're, they have no They're so tiny. Yeah. I, I think that there, there was a, um, a comparison made that one string, the size of one string, is like, is like a, re, uh, a red tree, one of those... Uh, huge California yeah. Red, yeah. redwoods yeah. compared to the universe itself. That's, the, that's how small a string is. You're never going to get that under a, a microscope or... Uh, be a very small microscope. It'd be a very, very small microscope. <laughs> so uh, so that, that's why you have to be a little bit careful yeah. about those kinds of... Exactly. And, but, but the point is, yeah. it, not, uh, not that, that, you know, it's not that I'm upset with the mystics trying to do a Frigid Capra thing. I think mm -hmm. they're just deeply confused. Yes. But what, what is silly to me mm -hmm. is the materialists themselves think they can rest on the bulk right. in order to prove materialism. Yes. That's psychotic. It is. There's yes. no matter down there at all. No. It, it's no. just, anyway. Uh, and, and not only that, the, the other side of it is, and just while we're on the subject, is that epistemologically, materialism can never be established as, as viable because it can't get around consciousness itself. Yeah. Yeah. Because consciousness is the, the screen through which all experience is mediated. And therefore, uh, materialism, you, to, 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 to maintain materialism epistemologically, you would have to get outside of your consciousness, which is impossible, because you'd still be conscious, and see what's what. See, but what we know is only through consciousness. We don't know a world uh, in itself, ding right. on zik, that we could reduce right. consciousness to. Right. We only know consciousness. So that's, that's a, a big hurdle, and they don't even see it. They don't even acknowledge well, as that. As we were saying, most of the, yeah. most of the naive approaches mm -hmm. to philosophy, none of the uh, knowledge communities agree with them. Right. And yet most of the people that are running the world run along on these naive assumptions. It's just part of the fun that Sam's sorry. Yes. Just... <laughs>